the single most important nutritional factor is not calcium. It's not vitamin D. It is... Are you curious about the impact of intermittent fasting on osteoporosis? What do we actually know about how intermittent fasting affects bone density and fracture risk? Bone density is a crucial indicator when it comes to osteoporosis, but it's not the whole story. In this video, I will share some of the limitations that raise questions and will make you go, hmm, what if? Hey there, welcome back to the Fitness Solutions Plus YouTube channel. Today, we have an important topic to discuss, intermittent fasting for osteoporosis. We'll be diving into what we really know, and just as importantly, what we don't know about how intermittent fasting affects the risk of fractures. Plus, we'll uncover how intermittent fasting can impact bone density. And finally, we'll reveal a single most important nutritional factor for both bone density and fracture risk. But before we jump in, let me first introduce myself. My name is Igor. I'm the author of the Amazon best-selling book, Osteoporosis Reversal Secrets, as well as another book called The No BS Guide to Intermittent Fasting for Women. As well, I run a personal training company. I've been running it since 2010, and I myself have been a personal trainer since 2006. Now, before we jump in, please subscribe because when you do, you'll get notifications about when I publish more videos about both intermittent fasting, osteoporosis, as well as other topics, and like this video because th it will help spread this video to more people with osteoporosis and help them improve their health. So let's get back to intermittent fasting for osteoporosis. First, let's briefly explain what osteoporosis is. The very simple definition is this, weak bones. And here's how I explain it to my readers and my audiences. Have you ever had an Aero chocolate bar? Well, healthy bones look like an Aero chocolate bar. Osteoporotic bones look like Swiss cheese. You see, at any given moment, you have cells that build bone and you have cells that break bone, and they're always active at the same time. The question is, how active are they relative to each other? If the bone building cells are more active than the bone breaking cells, you'll gain bone. If they are at the same level, you'll maintain bone, and if the bone breaking cells are greater than the bone building cells, you will lose bone. And that's what happens throughout a woman's life. By and large, the, the, uh, a woman will build bone up until the age of somewhere between 18 and 25. She'll maintain her bone mass until about 35 or 40. She'll slowly start losing her bone mass from 40 to about 50, 52. And she'll quickly start losing bone mass after menopause, largely due to the loss of estrogen as well as testosterone. So what are some risk factors and symptoms of osteoporosis? One of the most common risk factors is being underweight. In other words, if you are active, if you eat a lot of vegetables, but not a lot of protein, especially meat, fish, and seafood, you are at risk for osteoporosis. Family history is another risk factor, as well as certain medications can predispose you towards osteoporosis, especially things like prednisone, cortisone, calcium channel blockers, and other protein pump inhibitors. I've actually recorded an entire video about the symptoms of osteoporosis, which you can find in the description below. Now, there are many ways of dealing with osteoporosis, including exercise as well as nutrition. We'll talk about nutrition in greater detail later on in this video, but it's not what you think it is. It's not calcium and it's not vitamin D. Now, I have a bunch more videos specifically about osteoporosis. There is an uh, a video where I talk about different exercises for osteoporosis, but exercise is important and there are more important factors that I discuss in my video besides the exercises that have to do with the exercise. Check that out in the description below. I also have a video about the myth of calcium for osteoporosis and why calcium doesn't actually strengthen bones. Lastly, I have another video about calcium-rich foods for bone density. What are the real calcium-rich foods? Is it dairy? Is it vegetables? Is it nuts and seeds? Or something else? All these videos are in the description below. Check them out. Now that you know what osteoporosis is, let's also talk about intermittent fasting. Because after all, this video is about intermittent fasting for osteoporosis. So what is intermittent fasting? There are many ways of intermittent fasting. Probably the most common and popular way is what's called the 16-8 method. That is, you have eight hours where you can eat, usually whatever you want, and 16 hours where you can't eat. You can drink zero calorie beverages like water, um, diet pop, tea, coffee, etc., but no eating anything with 
calories. That's the most common, but there are other versions of intermittent fasting. There is something called the 5-2 method. That is five days a week, you eat whatever you want with no restrictions on calories or time, and two days per week you completely fast. You don't fast for a window, you fast the entire day. Lastly, there's something called alternate day fasting, which is a bit of a misnomer because you're not actually fasting, you're just having one day of regular calories, and the next day you're having about 25% of your regular calories, alternating with one day of regular calories and 25% of your regular calories. So it's not a true fast, but it's, it's similar to that. Now, what are the most common reasons that people use intermittent fasting? By and large, well, vanity. <laughs> they want to look better, they want to lose weight, and furthermore, these people who are into intermittent fasting, they've been breakfast skippers their whole life. Now, their entire life, they've been told that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and they were ashamed when they weren't eating breakfast. Well, now they have a scientific excuse or reason um, to use intermittent fasting. So no, they're not skipping breakfast, they're intermittent fasting. So these are the most common reasons people use intermittent fasting. Rarely do people use intermittent fasting for other reasons. Sometimes it's used for brain health, but there are other ways to do it. Uh, sometimes it's used for reasons outside of weight loss, but weight loss is by far the biggest reason, and just convenience. Um, there are plenty more videos about similar topics on my other channel, which will be linked in the description below. There is one video titled, What Doctors Don't Tell You About Intermittent Fasting for High Blood Pressure. Do you wanna know whether or not it works? Check it out in the description below. Then there's another video called, uh, why you're still not losing weight despite caloric restriction. So if you're frustrated that you've lowered your calories and your weight isn't dropping as fast as it should or not dropping at all, you'll be curious to check out that video. And I have another video titled, What Doctors Don't Tell You About Coffee for Bone Density. Coffee is hugely controversial for osteoporosis. Some people say that it makes you lose your bones, other people say it doesn't do anything. So what's the truth? Check it out in that video. Now that we've defined what osteoporosis is, as well as what is intermittent fasting, let's talk about customizing intermittent fasting for women over 50 with osteoporosis. First of all, I wanna um, emphasize this. Intermittent fasting is not a nutritional choice. It is a behavioral choice, it is a logistical choice, but it's not a nutritional choice. All that intermittent fasting does is it narrows your eating uh, window to a time. It doesn't narrow your calories, it doesn't narrow your macronutrients or anything else, it just narrows the time. So it's not a nutritional choice, it's a logistical choice. And with that logistical choice, there are ways to do it right and there are ways to do it wrong. If you're trying to improve your bone density for osteoporosis, the single most important nutritional factor is not calcium, it's not vitamin D, it is protein. As long as you're getting adequate protein throughout your feeding window, you will be fine. Now. I wanna keep things real and honest with you, just like we do here. While we may not have the perfect study that specifically examines fracture risk, we do have some intriguing research that sheds light on the subject. So let's dive into the science and explore what we've learned so far. There is one six month study that focused on bone density, which is a good indicator, but not perfect for fracture risk. The study involved participants with at least one component of metabolic syndrome which is a precursor to things like high blood pressure, diabetes, and heart disease. So it divided these people into two different groups. Group number one practiced intermittent fasting by restricting their meals to a 12-hour window, while group number two had no restrictions. Neither group restricted calories and could eat as much as they wanted. Surprisingly, there was no change in bone density in the intermittent fasting group. However, it's essential to consider the limitations of this study. The participants were not specifically recruited based on osteoporosis or osteopenia. That wasn't an inclusion criterion. And the fasting window of 12 hours may not reflect common intermittent fasting practices of 16-8 or 5-2. Additionally, while bone density was measured, fracture risk, the real thing that matters, was not assessed. Moving on, let's explore other research and extrapolate from there. Intermittent fasting primarily focuses on restricting the time to eat rather than calories or macronutrients. Studies indicate that when weight loss occurs through dieting, bone density can be compromised, while exercise-induced weight loss tends to preserve bone density. Fracture risk studies are preferred over bone density studies as they directly measure what truly matters. For example, when people lose weight, including bone mass, their fracture risk increases. Interestingly, research highlights that protein, rather than calcium or vitamin D, plays a pivotal role in reducing fracture risk. Normalizing protein intake can decrease fracture risk by over 60%. From a nutrition perspective, in my opinion, I don't think meal timing has as much to do with bone strength. 
but protein and vitamin K content are the two most important dietary factors. As long as you get the required protein and vitamin K, I don't think it makes much of a difference whether they come in a 4-hour window or a 14-hour window. Of course, if you're also doing the right exercise for osteoporosis, which by the way is different than exercise for weight loss or general strengthening or toning or anything else, you're giving yourself an even better chance. In terms of variables that matter the most to variables that matter the least, the most impactful variables on bone strength are protein content and strength training. The next most impactful variables are vitamin K and jump training. Everything else is just details. In conclusion, whether you choose to restrict your feeding window or not, and regardless of calorie restriction, ensuring appropriate protein intake for your age and your activity levels and making sure you're exercising properly for osteoporosis is really what's important. While meal timing may not significantly impact bone strength, prioritizing protein and maintaining adequate levels of vitamin K is key. Remember, intermittent fasting can be explored if it aligns with your preferences, but it's important not to rely on it solely for improving fracture risk. Be informed, focus on the crucial factors and tailor your approach to achieve optimal bone health. If you like this video, click like and subscribe and you'll be notified when more of my videos about osteoporosis and intermittent fasting will be published. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.